Hello, everybody. Welcome to our live broadcast. Today, we have a very special guest. My name is Flora, and we have Catherine and Emily with us. Hello. So, Catherine, would you like to... Okay. Hello, my name is Catherine, and I'm the creator of the Her Story on the BS Radio. Today, we have Emily with us to join the interview. Emily, would you like to introduce yourself to the camera? Yeah, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> thank you, Flora. Thank you for having me. This is so extraordinary. So, we're at Boston, where you are kind of presenting your final semester yeah. work. I am so impressed by what I've seen here, and I'm really excited for today. Thank you. Yeah, thank I'm you. Thank really you. I'm excited for today, too. And Flora, would you like to start the interview? Okay. So, well, the first question that we have for you is, as um, the CEO and the founder of Ghost Island Media, uh, could, could you tell us more about what it is and why you think it's so important? So Ghost Island Media, uh, we are a multilingual podcast network based in Taiwan. We have about 14 podcasts in English, Mandarin, and there's one in French. So we look at social issues that we really care about that Taiwan has in common with the world. Um, why is it important? I think podcasting is fun. It is just fun. Journalism is fun. Broadcasting is fun. Talking to people is great. And I think finding out what's happening in your community, um, finding that sense of purpose, finding out what you care about, what topics you want to cover, especially, for example, for here or like the five shows that I see that you guys have, um, all that exercises and then broadcasting it to the world and relaying all that you think it's important to the world. I think it's, it's, it's a really great work that you guys are doing. Mm. So what is it that inspired you to start initially? Um, you know, I wanted to do journalism when I was a student, and um, actually even before that, I was just a very, I don't know if your listeners are Mandarin listeners or English listeners, but uh, in Mandarin, we just say, I guan xian shi, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was so nosy, I wanted to know about everything, you know, every sound in the classroom, I'm like, what is that? You know, every event, I'm like, what is that? Just really excited and curious about my surroundings and the things that are happening. Eventually, I realized that's exactly what journalism is, you know, staying in tune with what's happening around you and um, going out and finding things out, meeting people, asking questions, and get, then getting a story, writing a story, or recording a story, or filming a story for others to, to kind of get a sense of what you've seen. So I love that work. And so I did, um, I tried, so I started doing journalism, and eventually I did documentaries for TV documentaries, there was nature, wildlife documentaries, I did animations, news, um, and eventually I switched to audio, and that's what, that was about four years ago. So now Ghost Island Media is four, on our fifth year, and uh, we're, we're, we're venturing back into TV as well, so we have a TV show now, so it's, it's great fun. That's a really like, wide variety of things that you do. That's very impressive. No, this is impressive. What you guys have <laughs> achieved as high schoolers, I, I think back in my high school we had a radio station, but it wasn't self-made. Like, you know, more it wasn't self-made. It was, there was a radio station, and you signed up. I did not sign up, but I had friends who did, and I'd always just, I always they always come out of the radio station with such joy, and I never understood it until way later when I got my uh, tried tried in in radio and podcasting. Um, but, you know, I, I just talking to your teachers on how you've all taken the initiative to put together the station to create your own program. That is absolutely impressive. I'm, I'm so impressed by you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. As you mentioned, there's so many, like, projects and also, like, channels and also, like, audio recording, like, tools you use. Have, is there any, like, you are most, like, impressed about, like, give you the, like, most impressive one you like the most in terms of the tools yeah so I was my career um, at the beginning of my career was when um, standard television was transitioning into HD and now we have 4k and then eventually there was kind of very high-end animation and so I would say if you wanted to do media explore all kinds of possibilities. Whenever there's a new technology, try it. You may not use it eventually, but try it because with every new technology, there'll be a new way of doing journalism, doing storytelling, and that is half of the fun, is figuring out what tools you have at your disposal. So right now, I would say in 2023, um, 
are we heading into 2024 yet? <laughs> um, it's how will AI change storytelling? I don't have an answer. I'm just starting to explore that. Um, it's a really scary thing, but it could add kind of maybe it's your workflow. Maybe you have you can push a really interesting interactive uh, show. So yeah, I think with any tool that's coming, just give your give it a try and play with it, and uh, you might get really surprised by what you end up with. I really like that kind of spirit to just try everything and also do like experiment on like new things because as like a content media or like the media platform, the most important thing is about like you always have passion to notice the things happen around you. As I was wondering like because like those other media has already become like a very influenced media on the platform. Why would you want to start another host like start hosting another show called the Game Changers with Emily Life? Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad you mentioned that. <laughs> Game changers with me, with Emily Waibu. Um, well, there's different elements to it. So, you know, why we wanted to do the project um, in terms of what Ghost Island Media offers. So, Game Changers is a collaboration with the TV network Taiwan Plus, which is an English language network from Taiwan. Um, and so, the audience they have is exactly the same as Ghost Island Media, is that it is, well, on the English side, it is people in the world who are interested in who, or who have a stake in Asia and Taiwan. And the Taiwan I see is that there's a group of young people um, who are doing incredible work in their fields, in the arts and science and technology and sports, in uh, social impact and education, and it could go on and on. So eventually, I wanted to group all these people together and just present as a bundle and say, hey, look, the world. This is Taiwan, you know, some fresh faces of Taiwan. And, but also, this group, 22 to 44 year olds, I think would make amazing mentors for existing students like you guys. Because some of them are not much older than you. And the work that they do, um, I, just, I just think if I had known about people like that when I was 16, like, I think that would have been really empowering for a young person to be able to say, actually, we have so much power. We can do so much good in the world. But how do we do it? Well, actually, look at, look at some of these people who have tried a little bit and have done huge contribution. So that's kind of why we wanted to do the project. Um, but also, um, I had come from TV, and so that was kind of a way for me to get back into TV, which is, is really fun. And also here. <laughs> Thank you. Like, but how is it different from the Ghost Island Media and the show you host? In the short way, it's not because um, the value that everything that we want to bring, which is the most interesting dynamic parts of Taiwan, um, talking to in important people, um, diving into topics that are emerging topics. So these are all emerging leaders, and that's something that Ghost Island Media is very, very passionate about. So in that sense, it's not different, but the difference is, um, well, the medium's different now that t this time is TV, which means the entire workflow is really different. Those selling media is very small. We have only about four people. Um, and for the TV show, we needed to then look for a, a, a big, much bigger crew. So that was really different for us. So we had to work really hard to assemble um, a video team, a styling team, <laughs> A, a, uh, a post-production team and that was something that you know for Ghost Latin Media we haven't had to do because as podcasting and radio it's um, it's a lot more bare bone but now with TV production it, there's a lot of people involved and which is also great fun and so I think if you also if eventually when you guys have TV stations I highly encourage giving your hands trying TV as well it is it's it's, it's a bit different but it's similar. It's all the same things that you guys are doing: finding finding subject, talking to people, production, technical team, editing team, broadcasting and distributing. It's all the very similar exercise. But um, yeah, so, so it's quite fun. I think it's really interesting that you mentioned. So uh, what Ghost Island Media is trying to do is kind of representing this Taiwan community, right, and emerging leaders. And that is like really what we're trying to do, really, and is like highlighting. Uh, and connecting really the VIS community and the community that's around our school. And so uh, I would like to ask, so as the like the leader and the founder, what is like the biggest difficulty that you faced and how did you overcome it? 
There is so so many so challenges. Many. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, along the way, um, it, the challenges keep changing. I mean, initially trying to put together a project and making and making people believe you, right? Usually, you know, you're you're creating a project out of thin air. Um, people would say, well. Well, I I don't know why I need this, right? Mm -hmm. So there there the it in the beginning we did hear a lot of um, well, there's always been supportive voices, but there's also some voices that are more skeptical. Mm -hmm. And so I think the challenge then was to be able to figure out how to transfer all the skepticism into something that you can utilize, mm -hmm. right? So if they say, well, I don't listen to podcasts, you go, huh? That's interesting. Well, that's true because when we started in 2018, 2019, podcasting wasn't very popular in Taiwan yet. So taking that skepticism, what I get out of it is, okay, so I need to make it easy for them to listen to podcasts, right? So they're telling me they don't listen, but what I'm hearing is it's too hard for them to listen. All right, mm -hmm. so that means in our communications or in the way we speak to them, we have to make it really, really easy for them to listen to. Mm -hmm. So that means, okay, how do I tell a particular, how do I write my social media? Do I have a landing website to make it really easy for people? So figuring out what are those difficulties are. So I think initially that was that. Um, and then as we're putting together the team, um, in Taiwan at the time, uh, there was no other podcast company. So that means no podcast dedicated producers. So then you really have to be creative and looking into your network to figure out Okay, what kind of what kind of colleagues would transfer their whichever experience really well into podcasting? So be able to stretch kind of your your limitations in that way, and then eventually you started launching shows. And um, but then with every version of your company, you should I believe that you should keep evolving. So we're about four years in now, and I think you know where do we want to take Ghost Island Media next? What is the next version of Ghost Island Media? Um, so it's, 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 an, it's always a challenge, but I think that it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me alert. Um, but along the way, there's been people who have been incredibly supportive or people who have gone through the similar experiences to you and they ask you really pointed questions to make you realize, ah, oh, that's right. Yes. And then you kind of you know, and you eventually go down this path of where you need to be. And it just happens, but it's a lot of hard work, but a lot of support from the community. Mm. That I think that you made some really bad, valuable points. So, like, as kind of the leader of this project, I've experienced a lot of the same problems as you. And you know, throughout this whole journey, it keeps on changing. There's different times, different like difficulties, and planning this expedition as well. Like, there's so many different things that we have to think about, or so many different little details, and it's. It's really nice to hear that from someone that like you know validates this like problem, and yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to Catherine. Well, well yeah. but one thing though, I would say of uh, what I've seen, what we've seen from campus radio stations or campus publications is for you to find a new editor in chief after you leave. Mm, yeah. At some point, your your job transitions into okay, I need to find somebody to carry this over yeah, to yeah, continue yeah. this. Um, and that's a whole different challenge, but I think that kind of exercise is so good later on when you, you know, participate in other organizations, become leaders of other organizations, and eventually it'll, it'll get quicker. Hmm. Yeah. That's very interesting. Like, from now, like, we're actually, like, handing this over, because I'm graduating. A lot of us are graduating. I'm also and, graduating. Yeah, we're all graduating, so we're have to, having to, like, pack this all up, basically, and, like, Give it else to give the keys to someone else. Yeah, where are you going for, for college? I'm going to I'm going to Chenggong Dash. Yeah, Zhongshan Dash. Okay, okay. Yeah. We're just well, you're sticking around in Taiwan then. <laughs> yeah, so we can still like oversee it, like if we're like control freaks, you know. We're weird. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, maybe that's it. So what you could do since it's a new club and you know everything about this club in and out, maybe you now in college you could become a mentor for the new incoming. Um, kid, uh, uh, students, and eventually you start growing out this alumni mentorship program for your own club. That could be a really, really interesting idea. But I'm doing like a personal project. It's like definitely after I graduate from BIS, I will still keep on doing this, like her story channel, and to like, spread my awareness and just keep doing it. So 
But I think it's like also really hard because I have to keep in touch with like the current events or like anything happened. But I saw, I saw you like you're interesting in like diverse topic. You're interested in art, human rights, and also like environment, some kind of things. I want to ask you like, how do you manage yourself to keep up with like so many topics? And you also like so well understanding of them, that, and that is why you can interview like so many people from them, like the kind of era. Um. Having a good network, having good friends actually that also are interested in a lot of different topics. Um, read a lot. Read a lot of newspapers. Read a lot of books. Love books. Read a lot of. You listen to a lot of radio stations, uh, movies, and so on. Just soak as much in as possible. But really, I think that's all things that you can consume for yourself. But but I do find it you. As working professionals, you do have to spend a little bit, a little bit more extra effort in talking about all these, finding people that you can talk to about these happenings or these topics or the books you're reading or the the news that you're reading about, discussing with them. So eventually, I think what's really nice about the school environment is that it's all given to, that it is all given to you in a way, right? The, the the classmates around you, the teachers are there. Talk to the teachers. Um, about topics that you find interesting out in the world, maybe it's not covered in your in your class in your in your classrooms, but um, that. So I think as working adults is then recreating that for yourself, figuring out okay, which are the friends that I can go to for particular topics. Um, I think that's kind of personally, but within social within uh, Go Silent Media, we love when we have when we add on an intern or a new uh, coworker. We love. That if they have multiple interests, something that we don't have already, right? The stranger the possible, the quirkier the better, because that all adds to the personality of the side of media. Um, so yeah, I think just broadening your network and being really, really curious about the world and asking a lot of whys instead of you know making that judgment right away. I think it's really important. And it's hard because sometimes I think it's a muscle memory for your brain. It, you have to really, really exercise that muscle. Because I think we're trained to also you're going to really good schools. You're trained to analyze the world in a certain way, but eventually just to keep asking, wait, that's that that's not what I, you know, am used to. But why is it? Why is it they do it that way? And what is it? What do they get out of? And I think we understand so much more about the world that way. But yeah, just keep it an open yeah, mind. I found it was so interesting. Like in your talking, you mentioned about asking why, but not like ju like judgment. And I wanted to ask you, like maybe you can you elaborate more on that. About asking why and just getting to the judgment part. Like, how does it differ? Um. Well, like, I'm really interested. So, I haven't. Uh, I'm really interested in why somebody has started a project. So, I think later on, once this is over, I would ask you, like, you kind of why you've gone down this process of starting this project. But I, and also, if let's say you know you have a show that's looking at women in history. And not knowing anything and about it at first, you know, instead of I think there are some people who look at it, and say, oh yeah, this is you know this is they they come with their perceived notion, but I'm interested in wait, what are you interested in? What are the type of stories you're interested in? And how are you putting it together? And how are you you're producing animations and videos? Um, how, who are you talking to? You know, what books are you reading? And that's how I get to know you. That's something that I will like definitely remember and just like keep on going. It, I think it's almost like being like inclusive enough, like ask about others' like opinions or like their experience, and also you can like advance yourself more. Like you can know more about like how other people think about it, and that's kind of like really interesting. And uh, you also mentioned about like the environment, like you're saying like. Find some people that you can talk, with. and that is how the opinions can like go, like go together, and you can you guys can actually like discover something new in the conversation. I want to ask, like, because you have spent a lot of time like, studying abroad, is there anything that you experience is different from the Taiwan and the U.S.? Yeah. So my my education experience has been really varied. Um, I at some point when I was in Taiwan, I also went to an experimental school. And it shaped me so much. I think what this environment that you guys are in is so special and unique that this—you will walk away. You will be, 
literally best friends forever. I mean, my best friends today is somebody who I met when I was nine years old at this experimental school in Taipei, just because we've gone through something so different and unique together. Um, so I went through that. So I grew up in Taiwan. I did a little bit of uh, mostly was a public school, public school. Just one semester at the experimental school kind of made all the difference for me. And then I went to the states for middle school, high school, and college. Um, it's it's different. It's it was a very different time then. I think existing as an international student in the United States at the time, uh, it was really something I had to navigate. Um, but it's the same thing. You look at other Xuetian Xuetang who have gone through it and take cues from them. Um, it's really scary to leave your home environment. You're familiar with the language. You're familiar with the culture. You're familiar with the pop culture. Where to go? What kind of food to eat? The type of temperature it is. What? How to dress? Right? Like all these things that we're so used to and take for granted living in Taiwan, and then all of a sudden. You get dropped. dumped. You get dropped <laughs> at this entirely new environment and yeah, culture, language. It's a really scary thing. Um, but I think for uh, you know, I think for students who are about to go through that, because eventually you might want to do study abroad in the U in, in, in the whether in the U.S. or U.K. or other other places around the world, or a master's program. Um, just know that everybody is a little bit scared because it is a really scary thing to leave your comfort zone, and it is okay. Um, but keep talking to your friends around you about it. Um, it's okay to miss home, but but one you know little by little you start venturing out, figuring out like how do you want to explore a particular city, right? So for me, I was in Boston. And um, I realized, oh, there's these world-class museums in Boston you could go to. Oh, the Boston Symphony, right? So you try to get a ticket there. But then, as a student, you don't have a lot of money, so you go, oh, there's a free kind of concert somewhere. So you start seeking out these resources, or just a really lovely walk by MIT or Harvard. Like you start figuring out, and I think that's when you, well, that's when I started to realize, what do I like? What kind of pace do I like? Do I like Rainy days or snowy days? Do I like a massive burger or do I want that tea? And that process of exploration, I think, it happens so much when we're on the road um, as a part of our education. Often, so it's scary, but I would say embrace that because it's it's once in a lifetime. You can't go back to do it. It just yeah, can't yeah. It's so it's such a grace to be a student. I know, but I'm about to graduate. It kind of made me more nervous. And the experience you share is like I think it's actually super helpful for the student, like uh, like the international student or like the culture kids, because we have like the diverse like experience, and we sometimes feel like kind of hard to like get into a certain group. And I think that is the most important thing. You sometimes like just don't know who you are because you want to like get to know your peers and to be more like them, but. You would just start to question yourself: Is it like the things I really want to? So, like, I was curious, like, what pushed you to come back to Taiwan and to start like the show, like Ghost Island Media? Because, like, it, it sounds, it sounds like to me, like you find your identity back. And I don't, I want to know about like, like the process, how you find. It. Yeah, but even that itself is a long process. So the first time I came back um, was. After college, I spent one year in New York. I uh, worked a little bit, made some good friends along the way, and then, and then I thought actually I should come back to Taiwan because at that point I hadn't lived here really for ten years. Um, I never immigrated. I was always an international student, so I always came back to Taiwan for summers, for the winters. I never really existed here, like as an adult. So I thought, okay, let's give that a try. I, I didn't think I was going to stay that long. I thought I was going to stay, work, apply to graduate school, and leave again soon. I just ended up loving. I think I got really lucky. I loved the coworkers I was with. I loved the projects that I was working on. It was so much fun staying with my family again. So I just getting to know Taiwan again. So then I stayed for seven years. Um, 
And then eventually I left again because it was just time. But the thing is, coming back this time around in 2018 to do Ghost Line and Media, I had to be in a place where I felt like I could start something. Whereas before, it was practicing. I had a, I had a um, mentor figure who put it in a really nice way, which is that um, initially you're practicing your Kung Fu. You're sharpening your, your knives. You're just, you know, and at that point, you should be wherever you feel like provides you the best opportunity to do that. And it's okay to not come back at, the, at then, at that time. Because there's something you want to do and you're, you're just practicing to be the best, best version and the best skills of yourself that you can do. Eventually, you get ready to come back and you feel like, okay, I'm going to go back and do something. And so that was my time. Um, but I think now there's a lot more students coming back. Um, back in when, during my class of graduates, a lot of them still stay in the U.S. Yeah. So I think the experience that you talked about being like abroad, being dropped in a whole new culture is something that we are, some of us are already experienced or are about to experience because most of us are actually going abroad, except for the two of us. The rest of the class <laughs> is going abroad. Except two of us. Yeah, so um, I think it's really interesting how you kind of went through the same process that we went through. So do you have any advice you would like to give to our current students who are going abroad, who are experiencing media and marketing and stuff like that? Yeah, I would say just keep in an open mind and read a lot and read a lot, keep an open mind. Um, one thing though, coming out of Taiwan, I think this particular year is not as bad anymore, but a lot of your peers for the last three years during COVID, they had a very different school experience from you guys. And that's just something to keep in mind as you're talking to um, classmates from around the world. Um, and I don't know what that does to, I, that experience, how that adds and how that has shaped each of us. And just keep that in mind, I think it's really important. Um, and um, I think having really good xuezhang and xuejie to, to ask advice from, because it can get really confusing. Um, I particularly have found particular refuge in the international, fellow international students population because they also understand where we're coming from, dumped into a different culture, but they are coming from Africa, they're from the Middle East, they're from Europe, and everybody is very similar that way. And finally is be ready to talk about Taiwan. You know, be ready, because people will be very, very curious. Yes, who are you? But also, what is Taiwan? Where is Taiwan? Where are you from? What happens there? Um, their Taiwan is much in the news again, and you will have a lot of, you'll get a lot of that questions. Um, but I think for me, even my relationship with Taiwan is something that has evolved over the years mm -hmm. and it, it will continue to. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's that. It's just being mindful of it. Um, know who to reach out to. Um, also, stay safe. Personal, you know, be aware of personal safety because where, wherever you are in the world, there's different just levels of things you should be careful about. Just keep that in mind. Definitely, and, yeah. Yeah. And uh, study hard because... You know, you're only student ones, yeah. and yeah. the schools that Study hard. you all Study head hard. on to um, are incredible institutions with great resources. Just take advantage of that. I know, I know that answer sounds like everything, <laughs> but don't feel like you have to do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. So for me, there was one particular semester where I was very into like a particular um, subject, and I go, okay, well, I'm exploring another semester where I was hanging out in Boston a lot, exploring the city. Another semester, right? So, so it's okay. So, so you have to find your own rhythm and how you break that down. Don't feel like you have to do everything at the same time. Yeah. I think at the end you mentioned to do anything, everything at the same time is so helpful for me because I'm the type of student I want to do so many things at the same time. I want to study hard. I want to start my own like, company or business at, and I want to do a lot of things. And I'm just like a burnout myself. <laughs> Kind of fun. So, and also in your talking, you mentioned like just get ready to talk about Taiwan. What is Taiwan? Where you That is so interesting because we often like feel not so confident about about like when I'm going to introduce I'm a Taiwanese, and they are giving me like a like, really confusing look. And I watched your TED talk, and this is also the 
that the last question we will have to break because your TED talk has really impressed me. As you mentioned, like the definition of the ghost island, you give a really new definition of it. Like we are a country that's like still growing our own identity. We have the finally have opportunity to speak for our own rights and to ask for our rights. So I think I want to ask is like, how can the media, like VS Radio or the media I did, how can we do to participate in the progress of Taiwan in Taiwan growing their awareness? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for listening to the TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous that day. I don't know if you could tell. There's a B. Okay. I don't know if you could tell from the from the video. I That's, I was, sounds a little bit nervous. I was so nervous. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, yeah. Um, I think for EIS, I think keep doing exactly what you're doing now, which is for each person. I mean, the leader keep leading, but then for the uh, members, keep thinking about the topics that are important to you because all of that then represents what's important to your generation, to your group, right? So. Here we have women's, we have experimental education, and so on. All these values add to what it means to be you, this collective you. Um, I would also say venture outside of the campus as much as you can. Um, well, I mean, cover everything on the campus for sure, but venture as much as you can. Um, events like today is great because then people come and visit you, and you're providing this booth where they can just find you and be so accessible. That's really important. But go out and find stories as much as you can, um, and break out of that comfort zone. I think um, that's that's much easier said than done. Um, but I think what that means to me is, you know, staying curious about your community, whether it's your district or your league. Or yes, your school, but also it's your city, your country, right? The universe gets larger and larger. But finding that thing that you're really interested in, and then taking that initiative and say, "I'm going to go out and get that story." You know, if your editor says, "I don't know about this," you keep convincing her. So, well, actually, no, it's really important. Well, she says again, "I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this." You keep pushing for what you believe in, um, and then. You know that, that that work will show and will impress everybody. Yeah, I think like finding the story is for the media platform is the most important thing. And also, as to participate in like Taiwan awareness, like telling story is also the way that we kind of building our own identity or the, what is the value of like all ethnic group of all collective memory together. Yeah, and that is part of the reason why I want to tell story. And today's interview is like about to end. Like, thank you, Laura. Like, yeah, interview thank you for Amanda. coming. And we with and like, thank you again. And we like, thank you for joining us. It's like you are a very important guest for us. Like, and the things you shared that I definitely will be helpful for the student in VIS, also for more people who are trying to start their own media platform and also trying to. Finding themselves and what kind of story that they want to tell. So. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been a real, real pleasure. It's really great seeing what you're doing here. And I have to say, I am again. I keep saying this at the top of the show that I was very impressed by the entire operation, but also I'm really impressed by the two of you. I could not have done what you're doing now at your age. I was scared to talk to people. I, I've always been social, but very, very sociable person. But talking to somebody like You know, on a really formal basis with something at stake, that was really scary to me as well. That TED talk, right? Being on stage, it was really scary. The first time they turn on the camera for you, and you're on TV, it's very scary. Every, you know, the first time having a team, being responsible for a team or a company, that is very scary. All of it is really scary, but I think you find people, you know, who you're doing this with, and you feel like. You know what? If you if it fails, it's okay because you went through this together. Like this experience that you shared, like you you will hold on to this, and that is beautiful. And so just you know keep trying, keep trying, and then it's you know you're insane. You know it seems like you're setting yourself up for a lot of projects and 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 schedules coming up, but 
if something fails, you have to drop something. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Well, time is running short. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, yeah. And that is it for our live broadcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Flora. Thank no you, Catherine. Problem.